What's up everybody, Coach Frontier here, ThrowBigThrowFar.com and Madison Throws Club. Uh, if you're not familiar with ThrowBigThrowFar.com, it's basically an online community of throwers and coaches uh, who want to learn from the comfort of their keyboard, want to get better and throw bigger and farther. Please join our online community. There's memberships for monthly memberships, six month membership and year long memberships. Tons of content on there, you should check it out. Today we're going to talk about uh, reversing versus not reversing. I'll be really brief about the shot putt. To me, honestly, I think you should be reversing in the shot putt. There are good reasons not to uh, for very few throwers, but predominantly, we've got a seven foot ring. I want to continue to accelerate the shot put uh, through that entire seven feet. Now I can continue to reverse, or I can continue to turn the right foot and stay in the middle of the ring and stay grounded, but it's gonna hold back some of the throw. As I get to the finish of that throw, um, I can take carry that ball further out into the sector um, if I push off the ground and reverse. Whether you're a glider or rotating, I really think that reverse is the right answer in the shot putt. And there's some subtle nuance that I'm not getting into in this video. And if you're a throwbigthrowfar.com member and you have more questions about not why to not reverse, uh, feel free to uh, put in the community forum or send me an email. Most of the questions I get about non-reversing and reversing are for discus throwers. If I'm a non-reverse thrower, I've got to have a great right pivot foot. I've got to have uh, a great block and post left side if I'm a right-handed thrower. Um, I need some speed, and I generally need to have a good understanding of the timing of the release. Uh, I need to turn the right foot completely, right hip completely, uh, and have everything on that right side rotating and turning and smashing into that left side that's blocking and posting uh, so that that summation of not only the rotational force I've created from the back but the linear force across the ring all goes into the discus and is released into the discus. If I'm a reverse thrower uh, good reverse throwers have to have the same thing they've got to have a great right foot pivot they've got to have a great left side post uh, and left side block arm. Uh, the tricky part about reversing is um, that the timing of when I come off the ground is so often done incorrectly, especially with young high school throwers, that I want you to consider really working on both. You need to be doing non-reverse drills and you need to be doing you know, your full throws with reverse eventually. Um, but I have a lot of throwers who come to me in Madison Throws Club that I get to coach in person uh, who I say, okay, hey, we're going to do some non-reverse stand throws, and they can't non-reverse stand throw because all they've done is reverse. And too often we're missing the critical components of pushing against the ground and how the ground is affecting the power that I get to put into the throw. So start working on your non-reverse throws if you're not able to do it. If you're a ThrowBigThrowFar.com member, this video is going to continue. You're going to get to see some breakdown of some good non-reverse throwers and some good reverse throwers. Uh, if you're not a ThrowBigThrowFar.com member, you're only going to get this short part of the video. I suggest, uh, hey, come join us and check out what we've got on the website. I'd love to have you join us. For more videos just like this, go to ThrowBigThrowFar.com and join our online community for throwers and coaches who want to get better.